thank you very much for the, uh, for the introduction, also for the uh, invitation. It's a great pleasure to, to speak to this conference uh, in honor of uh, Jose. Uh, I think we've met, I mean, the, the <coughs> best time I remember when we actually met on talk was in, uh, when I was uh, organizing some master class in Strasbourg in 2014. So, and uh, I was looking for uh, people to give courses at that moment. And uh, I think it was strongly suggested by a few people from the organizing committee and the uh, scientific committee of this very conference that uh, I should invite uh, <coughs> Rosé to, to, to give uh, one of those courses. And actually it was a great success, I remember. So uh, <coughs> the, the nice talk and also uh, all the nice beer and the nice uh, flamen uh, all over uh, Strasbourg. Uh, so really a, a nice time. Uh, well, so today I'm going to speak about torsion point of uh, elliptic curves and Berkowitz spaces uh, over Z. And uh, <clears throat> so let me uh, start by stating uh, precisely what I want to, to, to prove. So uh, <clears throat> it goes back to something called the uh, uh, Bogomolov, uh, Fu, Schinkel uh, conjecture. And uh, <clears throat> so we, um, yeah, let me pick two uh, elliptic curves, say uh, E A and E B, so elliptic curves. Um, so from with some arithmetic clever maybe, so say, say over Q bar. And I want to consider the, the torsion points. So <clears throat> like roughly the idea would be to try to compare the set of torsion points. Of course, I mean, if you start with two elliptic curves, like, like two different spaces, so it doesn't make so much sense. So uh, let me uh, do something like this. What I can do is uh, I can start with my elliptic curve, uh, mod out by plus or minus one. And we know that this is uh, something like a, I mean, it's isomorphic to some P1. Okay, and uh, now, I'm, of course, I do the same thing with the elliptic curve EB. So I end up in, okay, in the same space now, the P1. So it makes sense to uh, compare uh, the, the, the set of torsion points now. And uh, <coughs> the, uh, so the conjecture, yeah, I try to state it here, goes uh, as follows. <coughs> it would tell you that there exists some, some bond, so some uh, real number, M, uh, such that uh, each time you pick uh, two elliptic curves, so EA and EB as before, so say non-isomorphic, and uh, you look at the, at the set of uh, uh, torsion points, so we, which I look uh, like this as usual. So not the set, I mean, what I would like somehow to do is to compare them. So do something like uh, torsion point of A, torsion point of EB. Okay, I can do nothing with this. So I just project onto the affine line on both sides, take the intersection. <coughs> and the conjecture says that this should be uh, uniformly bonded by my constant m. Uh, so whatever the <coughs> pair of non-isomorphic elliptic curve that you pick. Okay? That's already pr something pretty strong. That means that those sets are always like uh, very, I mean, uh, okay, of course sometimes they can be the same if you pick the same elliptic curve and the same morphism. Otherwise they are like very different. Like, uh, okay, uh, I don't know what this constant m is, but like say if m is like 50, it would tell you that uh, each time you have two sets of uh, torsion points like that, if you have 51 points in common, then that's exactly the same set. So like some strong uh, uniformity uh, result. Okay. And so that's what the, that was the conjecture. And uh, which uh, now uh, has actually so, so several proofs. Uh, <coughs> the first one in some particular case is due to uh, uh, the Marco figure. Uh, yeah, by some uh, dynamical methods. I will come back to it in a, in a moment. And uh, okay, may maybe uh, I should say it's, this is uh, for uh, <coughs> EAEB, so elliptic curve uh, in the uh, so-called uh, Legendre form, or Legendre family. 
So meaning that you could write those elliptic curves in the form y squared equals x times x minus 1 times x minus uh, something, uh, say a for the first one. Um, okay. And uh, <coughs> you could also uh, deduce a proof of this uh, by work of uh, Kuhne. Uh, Gay. Yao, Gay, Kuhne. On those uh, uniform uh, model long results. And, uh, okay, and also uh, proved by me, uh, which is the one I'm going to present. That's right, that's right, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I'm making this uh, precise in a second, but uh, yeah, yeah, of course, you're, you're right, yes. <coughs> yeah, um, <coughs> yeah, just to, um, yeah, so the, 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 the remarks uh, that, that goes afterwards is that, uh, and I get back to, to, you, uh, to your comment, um, <coughs> is that if the, um, actually, the, we, the, 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 the map pi a like that is quite is quite explicit. So this pi a from e a to uh, to p one is some something rather concrete. So it's some uh, uh, degree two map ramified uh, at some point. So uh, actually the the image of the two torsion point <coughs> in this presentation. Those, this is a set of four points. Say. Uh, uh, maybe A1, A4, okay? And uh, conversely, uh, these points A1, A4 would determine, determine uh, the elliptic curve and the map, by which I mean you start with P1, you fix four points, in, in Q bar, and uh, you want to construct some uh, degree two morphism ramified exactly at those points, then what you get is uh, some elliptic curves, okay, up to a choice of, a, of an origin, and a map like this, okay. And uh, <coughs> right, in the, where, where you are actually in the Legendre family, that's exactly on what I mean here, is that you pick uh, three of those points to be zero, one, and infinity, okay. So it's also uh, what I want to, to point out is that like what the difference between uh, what uh, the Marco Krigerier do and what you need to do in the general case. So uh, in the uh, so the Marco Krigerier case, you really fix. I mean, you have a priori four points for the first elliptic curve, four points for the second elliptic curves. But what they, they do is fixing some of them. So a1 is b1 is uh, zero, a2. Uh, A2, B2 is 1, A3, B3 is infinity, and then, uh, okay, A4 and B4 are free, so you have two parameters. Uh, so A4, B4, <coughs> and actually, if you look carefully at the proof, I mean, don't have to be so careful, but you look, you see that most of the paper is uh, devoted to, to study actually the, the quotient of the, those two parameters. So, and uh, what, do, what they do is to study uh, A4 uh, over B4 and look at what happens when this degenerates. So they really work with a, a one-dimensional uh, family <coughs> of elliptic curves. And in the general case, uh, well, so you have all those parameters, so A1 to A4, uh, B1 to B4, so that's like uh, eight uh, parameters. So of course, yeah. so of course you could uh, remove some of them. Like uh, you are uh, those parameters of P1, you can remove three of them just by letting uh, like PGL2 act on uh, on P1. Just up to a nomography, you can remove three of the parameters, but you, you still end end up with four uh, with five parameters. So maybe sometime you could take caution, but it's not exactly clear which one you do. So you, you have really have some higher dimensional family to deal with, which makes the thing uh, more, more complicated, of course. Uh, yeah. <coughs> okay, so uh, let me uh, maybe say a bit more about um, 
So I'm, I really want to focus on this strategy here, which is uh, the, the one I, I, also, I also use, which is something quite um, uh, original, I, I believe, and um, like uh, that a lot. And so it's based on a dynamical system. So uh, from an arithmetic point of view, so we'd say arithmetic uh, dynamical system. So uh, how does this work, at least in this setting? Uh, so, the, the, so yeah, you see we have an elliptic curve, we have P1, and actually we want uh, what we, we were used to studying uh, just dynamical systems, so like endomorphisms, uh, on P1. So the, the first thing is to, uh, so we have this map like this, so EA upstairs, and I can consider the multiplication by two. And uh, of course we know that the, uh, the pre-periodic points under this map are exactly all the, the torsion points of whatever order. And uh, I compose this with my, uh, my maps uh, PA, a projection map to P1, my pi A, sorry. And uh, you can check that uh, you can make this into a commutative diagram uh, using here the so-called uh, lattice map. I mean, this is really uh, yeah, so something quite clear. I mean, if you look at the presentation here, I just mod it out here by plus or minus one. It's just telling that multiplying by two would preserve the action of plus or minus one, which is quite clear. And uh, so downstairs now you have this lattice map here, and uh, which is, the, I mean, by the way, quite explicit. It's really easy to, to write uh, an explicit expression of this map in this case of the Legendre family, for instance. You don't need to, to know like the, the, the duplication formula, I mean, on the x coordinate on the elliptic curve. Uh, so this lattice map, and uh, what you check uh, readily is that the pre-periodic point of this map are exactly the images of the torsion point to the set we want to look at. Okay. And so, uh, <clears throat> okay, now we want to look at the, so like compare uh, the set of pre-periodic points of two of these lattice maps on P1, okay? And meaning somehow we want to, to have some way to compare those, uh, the associated dynamical system, okay? And uh, I mean, in, I guess in a conference like that, we, we, there's something that, that, that we, we know how, yeah, how to do this. Uh, you, you, I mean, you have, uh, of course, you have a dynamical system on P1. So maybe you, you, you look at uh, O of 1, and you want to put some uh, metric on it. So you put some uh, metrics, let, let me denote it by norm like that with, uh, with some A, which is uh, something like uh, defined by, uh, by Zhang, I guess, which is associated to this dynamical system, meaning here that the pullback of this metric would be... Uh, this metric to the power, uh, to the power, to the power four. Yeah, lattice map is of degree four. So that's it, maybe. Okay, and uh, so this would be some uh, metroid uh, Lie bundle, and of course you can define uh, similarly another metroid Lie bundle using the other lattice map. And now you want to compute them. <coughs> so you want to compare them, and actually that's the thing uh, I'm going to, to focus on. And uh, as I said, so when you look at those uh, torsion points, you want to prove that those torsion points are really different. And uh, in other words, this amounts to saying, at least in the I mean, principle, that the, the two uh, dynamical systems are uh, different enough. And uh, so what I want to prove is something like that. So saying that there exists some uh, constant delta positive such that, as before, so for any two elliptic curves, maybe uh, EA uh, and EB, non-isomorphic, when you, uh, so you can compare actually those two uh, dynamical systems, all the, the churn classes associated to those. Uh, so I said uh, LA4, uh, churn class, uh, yeah. You can intersect them. And you want to prove that this is <coughs> at least as big as this small positive constant. 
So that's a way to, to compare those two dynamical systems. And you want to, to prove that, uh, okay. You can imagine that this is some kind of measure of the distance between them. Uh, okay, which is something I want to, I want to, to make precise. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, let, I'm just going to, uh, just because it's uh, easier for me maybe, uh, I, uh, I just will denote this uh, uh, like this, E of LA, LB, which is some kind of uh, mutual energy. And why am I, am I doing this? Because it's, uh, I'm relying on some uh, theory by uh, Favre and Rivera Letelier where they use this kind of terminology and this kind of ideas to, um, to understand the distance. So, uh, and this mutual energy, actually, I mean, so this is like some kind of a arithmetic quantity, right? And you want to, I mean, <coughs> uh, as, we, as we always, always do, like uh, decompose this as a sum of local factors. Uh, so let me uh, spend okay, a few minutes on this. So local factors of uh, this uh, quantity. Um, <clears throat> so first, uh, let me start with the, uh, uh, maybe the Archimedean uh, side. So uh, on, uh, on uh, yeah, so Archimedean side. So uh, we are on, uh, P1 of C, and I have my, uh, my endomorphisms uh, LA, LB that act on P1 of C. So, okay, so now I, I, I'm going away from the, from the, I mean, I had the algebraic picture. Now, this, uh, I really consider it as a, like, as a topological space, as something with a much more structure and much more flexibility. And uh, if I have a dynamical system like that, there are several things I can associate with such a nice and a, nice topological setting. And first of all, uh, I would like to associate some, uh, some measure. So, uh, so uh, I define, you can associate to those LA and LB. I do it with the subcript A. So some uh, equilibrium measure. <coughs> and uh, something canonically associated to my uh, endomorphism, here my lattice map, uh, so which goes uh, like this. So maybe I say mu, uh, so infinity, just to recall the place uh, I deal with. So mu infinity of LA is going to be, uh, well, how do you want to find something that's, say, invariant enough under the action of LA? So you start with some measure, rather yeah, canonical enough, say the, uh, say the, the, the R measure on, uh, on the unit circle inside P1. So that's the R measure. on uh, okay, the, the unit circle, okay? And then I can take this, I can pull it back by uh, my lattice map. Uh, okay, so this, uh, this has total mass one, and I still want something of total mass one, so I should divide by the degree, which is four here. And I can do this uh, many times, so just raise this to the power n, and raise the four to a power n again, and look at the limit when n goes to infinity. And uh, this actually converges to some measure, which is called like the, uh, uh, okay, maybe characterized in different ways. So the, the, the equilibrium measure of uh, this endomorphism, and uh, which is something that's rather canonically associated to it, and uh, something I can work with. <coughs> and what I can do using this, uh, this theory by, uh, by Favre and, uh, and Rivera Letelier is uh, associate, I mean compare, maybe not directly the dynamical systems, but compare in some way the, measure, the, the, the measures, the equilibrium measures uh, associated to those. Uh, so let me write down a formula. Once I'm done with everything this. Good. Um, <coughs> So, uh, so you have this uh, local uh, energy pairing. So, yeah, due to, as I said, Favre, Rivera, Atelier. Uh, okay, so the, the, the formula is like this. Uh, if you have a mu, yeah, let me write mu a, mu b for just any measures, uh, regular enough, 
maybe I don't want to be super precise about this at the moment. Uh, so you want to uh, integrate so over uh, C times C uh, minus the diagonal. Uh, you integrate something like this, log of absolute value of x minus 1, where x and y are the coordinates on my two copies of C, of course. And uh, uh, so and the measure you use are uh, the difference of the measure of the two measures in the variable x, uh, tensor the difference of the measures in the variables y. OK, so I mean, th this is some formula. Uh, that is just a very, very general formula, right? And uh, you could, in uh, this, this actually is something uh, computable, which is easier to see in some uh, maybe different presentation. If I say something like, um, yeah, you uh, <clears throat> okay, if you're a bit used to, to potential theory, if you just look at, uh, you, you forget about the, the second copy of the measures, and you look at that, and you see that what I'm doing is uh, basically finding some potential of uh, the measure that's here in the, in, the other, in the variable y. So that would be something like this. Actually, uh, this amounts to integrating some, uh, say, function, uh, maybe lambda. Uh, against the measure uh, mu a minus mu b, uh, so where uh, lambda is a potential, so uh, the Laplacian of lambda would be uh, mu a minus mu b. And so basically, if you, this means that if you know your uh, measure mu a and mu b well enough, like you know a potential of mu a, a potential of mu b, you just take the difference of the two potentials, and then you integrate this one against the measure, and you get exactly what you want, uh, yeah, with the minus sign. Okay. So, I mean, this can be really explicitly computed in, uh, in many, many cases. Uh, okay, and uh, yeah, okay. you have nice properties of this uh, local, uh, local parent. First uh, is that this is uh, non-negative, and this is zero if and only if the measures are the same. Did I forget something I wanted to say? No, seems fine so far. And uh, okay, so that's uh, what I want to say about like the Archimedean, uh, the Archimedean setting. Mm -hmm. And now, <coughs> of course, I want uh, something similar in the non-Archimedean setting. Uh, so non-Archimedean, uh, what did I write? Non-Archimedean uh, side. Uh, <coughs> So I want to say that everything works the same. Of course, the same thing I should say is, uh, I mean, well, what are the, the replacement for the various things I wrote down there? So uh, replace, uh, maybe uh, first thing is P1 of C. Of course, you don't want to act anymore of P1 and C. So you, you replace this one with, uh, uh, so uh, maybe in the case of uh, CP, it would be something like this, P1 analytic over CP. So this is the Berkovich projective line. Okay, so I'm pretty sure uh, most of you are familiar with those Berkovich spaces, so I won't recall uh, too much about them. And uh, <clears throat> I mean, the nice thing that I'm interested in here is that this is a nice topological space. Uh, like uh, locally compact, which is very useful when you want to look at measures and convergence of measures, something like that. Uh, okay, uh, pass connected and so on and so forth. Many nice properties. And, uh, and of course, uh, my endomorphism that are given algebraically would act also on this Berkovich space. Very good. And uh, so that was like the, the first line over there. And the second line, I just used the R measure on the circle. So I uh, should certainly tell you what is the, uh, the analog of this on the uh, non Archimedean side. And uh, it will be, uh, so the direct mass at the so-called uh, Gauss point. So let me write it down. So direct measure supported at the, uh, at the so-called Gauss point, Gauss point. <clears throat> and uh, so maybe let me just recall that the Gauss point, so as any point in a Berkovich space, you can define it uh, as a multiplicative seminorm. So here, maybe on, on A1, it would be seminorm of uh, polynomials in one variable of a CP, 
okay? And uh, to some polynomial P, you just associate the uh, soup norm, the supremum norm over the disk of center zero radius one. Yeah. What happens if you change the, the starting measure? Is it really important the starting measure? Or no. No, 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 yeah, yeah, except uh, you, you don't want, uh, maybe you, you could find some exceptional point. I mean, we, we, if you start with some, uh, some uh, yeah, direct mass supported as some exceptional point, it could remain in the measure, which you don't want. Otherwise, uh, no, I mean, so there are just a few exceptions you should, uh, yeah, <coughs> you should discard, but apart from that, no, you, you could start from a lot of things, that's right. And here, you're the same, of course. Uh, yeah, no, it was just also to, to, yeah, to help having some analogy between the R measure and this side, and you, we know quite well, I mean, I have learned this from uh, Chamberlois that, uh, I guess, uh, <coughs> popularized a lot this, uh, this idea that the analogous of, the, uh, of the, this measure on this side is really the measure supported at this Gauss point, mm -hmm. and this is something that exists only in the Archime non-Archimedean settings, that this is like the soup norm on the disk or on the circle, the same, by the maximum principle, uh, is multiplicative. So it corresponds to one point in this space. And then everything carries over. Okay. And then uh, just, uh, let me just write same, uh, same theory. Okay, of course you, you need to, uh, yeah. there are a bit more points in, uh, in uh, P1 times P1 as in C2, but it's exactly the same thing. You need some small uh, generalization of that, but let me not spend too much time on it. I mean, if you know the theory, it's quite clear what you should put there. And uh, yeah, otherwise, maybe you, you don't care uh, that much. Uh, but it's something very, very analogous. I mean, no, no difficulty, no additional difficulty lies uh, like see here. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, maybe I want to say, maybe not write it down, but okay. I wrote here just CP because that may be the thing we are primarily interested in, but you could do exactly the same thing actually over any uh, complete non-Archimedean valued field. You have such a Berkowitz theory over any complete non-Archimedean valued field, and here, I mean, it's something like very general. There's no uh, property of CP that are used to define all this and uh, the, the property that, that, that go with that. So it's actually very general, and I will come back uh, to, to, to this and use it uh, uh, yeah, <coughs> in a few moments. Uh, okay, and uh, yeah, I, I said it, but maybe I should uh, write it down explicitly. So I wrote it down that I wanted to, to, to show you the local factors of uh, this, uh, this pairing. So uh, yeah, let me write this down explicitly. <coughs> that, um, okay, so maybe if I start with uh, two, uh, two elliptic curves, uh, EA and EB and that are defined over some uh, number field K. Uh, then, so this um, mutual energy, uh, as I call that, uh, so which is uh, nothing that the, the intersection uh, pairing, uh, intersection number of the two metrized uh, like bundle, if you are <coughs> more comfortable with uh, this notation, and it's just the sum over all uh, places of the number field K of, uh, okay, you, you have some uh, normalization factor, like the usual stuff, like the local degree divided by the global degree over Q, of uh, all those measures uh, I wrote down there. Uh, so mu V L A uh, and uh, mu V, so the, the, the local energy between mu V L A and mu V L B, okay. Uh, good, and uh, maybe a, a remark is that this really behaves as some kind of, of distance between uh, my dynamical system in the sense that uh, you have some uh, triangle inequality, uh, okay, maybe for the square root of it. If you add some other endomorphism of the, cell, of the same kind, you can prove that the square root of this one is at most the square root of uh, uh, the same thing, the mutual energy between LA and LC plus the square root of the mutual energy between LC and LB. Okay. So in some sense, you're really measuring the distance between the two dynamical systems, which is something, at least uh, philosophically, that, that we want to do. Okay. And, uh, right. So now I've just explained, uh, so I started with my global picture. 
used uh, show you like the, the local factors. But uh, doing so, I mean, I, I'm somehow missing uh, missing something, which was like the, the link between uh, like the, the and the, the fact that this uh, dynamical system are really something uh, something global at the beginning. And I would like to put together those uh, all those uh, local factors, right? So, and uh, there is a, a nice way. I mean, I claim there is a nice way to to, to do this, which is by going through some uh, global um, analytic object which uh, goes under the name of uh, Berkovich spaces uh, over the, over the integers. Okay, uh, which, uh, <coughs> so maybe it's uh, an object that's slightly less common than the Berkovich spaces over a field, so I just spent a few minutes telling you a bit more about that. Uh, let me start with uh, like the, 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 the yeah. The, the, the basic object, like the dimension zero, so to speak, uh, <coughs> space, so which would be like the, the spectrum of Z in the sense of Berkovich. So uh, the definition, uh, just when I say it quickly, is just the set of uh, multiplicative, so multiplicative uh, semi norms on Z. Okay? Uh, so, if you are familiar with Berkowitz definition, it's really like the usual definition, except you, you don't need to have a field uh, under that to, to be able to sell it. And so that's exactly the definition uh, Sebastian gave uh, in his talk, so multiplicative seminorm of so, or, or some kind of uh, valuations or semi-valuations. Uh, there is a slightly a slight difference here is because we, we start with something over Z and we definitely want something Archimedean and so like valuations are just by, by nature more non-Archimedean. So here we definitely want of course this Archimedean part too. And uh, let me draw let me draw a picture maybe. So we, we actually know all the seminorms. So seminorm is not so far from an absolute value and we know all the absolute values uh, on Z by uh, Ostrovsky CRM. Uh, so the picture goes like this. Uh, what do we have for uh, as absolute value? We have, uh, yeah, let me start by uh, the trivial absolute value. So you send zero to zero because you have two and everything else to one. You have, of course, the usual absolute value, which I denote with some uh, subscript infinity. And the nice thing is that you, you can interpolate between the two of them just by uh, raising the usual absolute value to some power uh, epsilon between zero and one. Uh, okay, that's epsilon. Uh, you cannot go beyond, otherwise you're going to lose the triangle inequality, as uh, you can check easily. And uh, okay, so that's the Archimedean part. And as you know, uh, we have uh, just uh, also a quite large non-Archimedean part, actually a periodic part for uh, each P, which goes uh, basically like this. So uh, let me draw some, uh, yeah. So I have some uh, periodic absolute value and I can consider all the, the powers of the periodic absolute value. And this, times, uh, this time my power can go from uh, the power zero, where I get back the trivial absolute value on Z, to, uh, to, to I mean, you can get as big as you want, like the, 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 this uh, uh, <coughs> stronger triangle inequality will hold, I mean, for any power. And uh, so the only thing is what do you get uh, downstairs? And if you yeah, just try to compute, raise this to the power, I mean to some power, and uh, let the power go to plus infinity, and you end up with uh, the trivial absolute value on, some, uh, on the quotient field uh, Fp, Z over Pz, uh, meaning that, uh, so, which is something very concrete, of course, uh, you go from Z to R, and uh, some n is sent to zero if uh, P divides n, and, uh, and one otherwise. Uh, yeah, sorry, I'm lacking space. Okay. And you have such a branch, of course, for uh, any prime number. So that's a little bit for the, uh, for the two, three, whatever, whatever. Okay. So infinitely many non-Archimedean branches. So that's the spectrum of like the basic space over Z, like the, the, the most basic you can, uh, you can think of. Okay. And uh, I should tell you uh, something else, which is, uh, of course, it's more than a set. Uh, so it's at least a topological space. And uh, let me write down maybe the topology here. 
uh, you could say, okay, there are several equivalent ways to say it. It's like generated by uh, the, some open subsets of this form. So um, uh, I look at some uh, uh, <coughs> f between uh, absolute value of f between two bounds a and b. Uh, so far, uh, and you let uh, A and B vary in R, and F vary in Z. Okay, so this is really, sorry, the, the set of semi-norms, maybe I should say it like that, such that uh, when you apply it to some F, it's beyond, uh, be between, sorry, two, two bonds. So this is an open set, and this is actually a, uh, a basis of the, a pre-basis of the, of the open sets. Okay, you let A, F, B vary, and you find a lot of things. And uh, so, okay, I, I'm not going to do, uh, to do the exercise, but uh, just uh, show you uh, some opens here. So, I mean, the, the segments here are really uh, segments like in the usual uh, topology with a parameterization given by this one. I'm not cheating here. So, like, this is some open set, this is some open set, uh, this is here some open set too. The only, I mean, the, the most interesting thing is what happens around this point at the trivial absolute value here. And if you, uh, if you want to do some computation, and I mean, uh, <coughs> I honestly uh, suggest that, that you do it if you've never done that before, it's pretty, I mean, you just pick here some, uh, some number, like uh, six or 15, and you try to put some bounds and try to see what happens, and you see that you have actually pretty big neighborhoods of this point here, something that would look like this. Uh, so this, uh, yeah. Uh, like this, like this, and uh, actually taking like almost all branches entirely, except a finite number of them. Okay, so uh, the, the, what I want to say in this sense is that the, the topology is really of uh, some adelic nature. Another way to put it, it's very, very reminiscent of the topology of spec Z, of course. When you look at the uh, neighborhood of the generic point, you have almost everything except finitely many points here, finitely many ends of uh, finitely many branches. <clears throat> really the same, the same idea, okay? And, um, <clears throat> okay, let's keep this in mind. And now uh, you, uh, of course, can, uh, no, maybe I just write on this board over there. Um, yeah. <laughs> of course, you have a more general definition of uh, Berkovich uh, space over, <clears throat> over Z. And uh, so I don't want to study it in uh, full generality because it would, yeah, needs uh, much more time. But uh, just if you, like, in the, like uh, we, we can talk about some analytifications, right? So let me start with some X, which is uh, the spectrum of uh, some algebra A. Maybe I need A to be of a finite type of a Z, yeah, never mind. And uh, you have a notion of uh, analytification of the, uh, over, over Z as a Berkowitz space. Uh, okay, let me just say what it look like, what it looks like as a, as a set. So that would just be kind of the same definition, uh, like the multiplicative uh, semi-norms on A. Okay, and there are several equivalent ways to state that. Uh, <coughs> maybe, so uh, like the maps from A to some valued field uh, so that's a complete valued field. Okay, uh, up to uh, up to uh, up to I would like to say isometric embedding, meaning that if you have some field here, I mean you, you have a map from A to some field, like some field of Laurent series in one variable. Of course, you could compose by a field of, uh, by going to a bigger field, like a field of Laurent series in two variables. Of course, you want to identify the two of them. Okay. And you get back the, the semi-norm just by the, by the composition, and from a semi-norms, by playing some simple game, you can cook up something like this. And uh, <clears throat> yet another way to say that is maybe, uh, so a map from A to a field is just a point of the associated scheme, right? So this is just the data of some complete valued field, and a point x in, uh, in the scheme with coefficients into uh, this field, okay? So, uh, so complete valued again. So that's what it is. So like you, you look at just all your, uh, your points of the scheme, okay, up to the same thing. Uh, yeah, isometric embedding. 
the point of the scheme, and but not only the, the point with value in field, but in values in complete valued field, and that's what you get. And you can generalize the topology, and of course you have more than a topology, you have a sheaf, and so on and so forth. And a, and a, and a very nice theory overall. Okay. Uh, good. Uh, yes, uh, I'm, I'm doing with time. Uh, yeah, not so great, but uh, not that bad either. Uh, yeah, so let me maybe draw one more picture uh, in, uh, in the case of uh, the, the, the line. I mean, you, you need to start there, I think, if you want to understand anything. So uh, the line over Z. Of course, you have a map to M of Z, like a that's that the multiplicative norm over Z uh, bracket T, and they all induce a multiplicative norm over Z, uh, for sure. And so it looks like this. So this would be this uh, Archimedean branch. And this may be some non-Archimedean branch. OK, this is a trivial one. And uh, what do I have? <coughs> OK, so th that's a good question. Well, what do I have over this point here? So you have like all the possible uh, semi-norms of uh, over the, the, the polynomial with one variable over z that induce this one, that induce the trivial absolute value. So you need, if you, if you look at this presentation downstairs, you need a complete valued field that extends a Q with a trivial absolute value. So we know there are not so many of them. Actually, there are exactly two, R and C, up to isomorphism. And so what we get here are only C points, I mean R points, or C points, uh, up to isometric embedding. And of course, an isometric embedding could also be just an, auto, an, uh, an automorphism of this field here. So which means we get here as a space, so that just something uh, I could draw like, like this, that just C, uh, but mod out by a complex conjugation. Okay, so that's what the fiber over this point here looks like. Okay, and same for uh, all the, the Archimedean things. So you have just copies of C or of the upper half plane. And uh, over the other points, you get uh, over the, the trivial valuation, you have something like that. And over the, yeah, any, any other point like this one, you have like uh, the usual picture of a, of a Berkovich space with uh, many, many branches, like the structure of the real tree, like that. Okay? And the thing is that that, that are all the, the, the fibers of my space that are all put together in some nice way. Okay? It's not completely easy to understand the topology when you put everything together. I mean, I can tell from experience that you can spend a, a whole PhD thesis trying to understand this. <laughs> and, uh, but okay, it, it actually works and you have a, a nice way. I mean, the, the, all the things are, are put together in a very nice way, which you actually don't quite see when you look at this as a vibration, but you should still keep this in mind. Uh, very good. And now I want to draw a more complicated picture and get back uh, at last to uh, my problem of uh, uh, intersection of torsion points. <clears throat> okay, so let me try to draw the picture here, which is maybe like the, the most important thing of the, of the talk. And, uh, okay, so... Uh, uh, so I will try to draw the picture in a slightly unusual way, like uh, not having a tower uh, of spaces in this direction, but in this direction to use uh, the board at best. Uh, so let me start with uh, M of Z. Uh, so again, same picture, right? Something like that uh, with the non -Archimedian, uh, the Archimedean branch upstairs. Okay, and now what do I want to have? I want to get back to those elliptic curves. So I have a, a like kind of modulized space of pairs of elliptic curves with the projection, which, uh, so like a modulized space of pairs, it's a P for pairs, so that I, I analytify. Okay, so it's, uh, I don't know what it looks like, honestly, so it's just something quite big. But so over any point here, you have something big. So I, I like to draw it like this, like, uh, uh, something like that, that's so that would go over there, and then like, uh, you know, it looks like, like this, like basically the, uh, the, the uh, yeah, uh, so usually I draw, of course, in the other direction, it's a bit tricky today, but uh, 
Okay, and so on and so forth. Like it really, I mean, you, you see, do you have all those spaces over all those branches? And I mean, to, to me, it really looks like, like a book, of course. Like, and this would be like the, the over the three version, that's really the, the, the binding of the book. Like if you remove that, you just have a bunch of, page, of pages like in completely random order and uh, you lose a lot of things. So this is really what puts all those pages together. And you, you want to keep this track of this information to know how all the different places are, are kept to, together. So that's my space, and to be a bit more precise, so we have this coordinate like A1, A2, A3, A4, B1, B2, B3, B4, very good. But we say, uh, okay, we can let uh, uh, PGL2 act on those coordinates, and maybe we can say that A4 is just zero, and maybe B4 is just infinity. Okay, so uh, maybe so we, we, we remove this one. Okay. So we are left with just six numbers, but we, we can have like we have one more degree of liberty. So we could fix one of them to B1, but we could be breaking the symmetry, which is not very convenient. So it's better to work like up to homotopy, right? And so to, to consider this in a, a, like a, a projective space. So I should put like dots like that here, blah, blah, blah. Maybe uh, remove the extra point. So you end up here in some P5, actually. But it's still something very concrete, right? You have just six coordinates. I mean, all the AIs are different. Uh, all the BIs are different. And I mean, you, you have very explicit equation for this space. And you look at the analytification of this space here. OK, nice. And now I have uh, this uh, dynamical system over P1. Uh, OK, so you ju I just take this space here. And I take the relative pi1 over z over this. Okay, so now, uh, okay, the, basically the same picture as before. If you have some point there, so that's a point living over the Archimedean branch. So as I said before, it's some C point. So over there, we, we are going to have some, uh, some uh, so just uh, some copy of C, or maybe C modulo the Galois action. So that's the fiber, so that's a relative projective line, and that goes over this one like that. Okay, and now, uh, of course, over a point here, you also have uh, some uh, some space that would look as uh, some uh, okay some Berkovich space, uh, Berkovich line, something very branchy, and uh, some point here also some Berkovich line over some field. So it's difficult to tell uh, there are, there are Berkovich line over some field. It's difficult to tell exactly over which field. So this one, you know, just it's going to be an extension of Q with a trivial valuation. So a typical example would be this, this is something of a Q with a, like a, typically some uh, iterating Laurent series, something like that. So it's a very big field, I mean, with a high transcendence degree, even topological transcendence degree. And here it would be over some, uh, like some completion of uh, QP with uh, all those variables. So all of them are very big fields that are put together, okay? And the nice thing uh, is that in this picture, I still have my endomorphism, my lattice endomorphism LA and LB that act here, right? Okay, and I can use them. And uh, if you want, you, you, you can put, push the, 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 the picture even, uh, even further by considering the elliptic curves here over that. And uh, which would give here, so like the, the, the usual uh, picture of, of an elliptic curve. And, uh, okay, and uh, here, so different kind of elliptic curves in the, in the, in the Berkovich setting, also which, uh, okay, and, uh, or that's bad reduction case, and that would be uh, like a good reduction case. Okay. And that's like the old picture, and you can look at the multiplication by two here if you like to. Okay. <coughs> Okay, then that's the very picture, and that we, we can, uh, I claim we can argue on this. Okay, and uh, I'll just, uh, yeah, try to uh, wrap this up uh, very quickly. <clears throat> and to tell from this picture how, uh, how the proof works. So that will be like my, my fourth point, which is the strategy of the proof. Of course, I'm not going to give you uh, too many details, but. Uh, just tell you that we have uh, like three main steps. First one would be uh, so look, look, uh, going sorry from discrete to uh, continuous. Second step uh, is what I call like the uh, 
how do I call this? Now, central, uh, central estimates. Sorry, uh, just a translation problem. And uh, third step is some like, a, like, a, uh, yeah, like a, I want to somehow evaluate so you understand what happens uh, <coughs> in the central, uh, like in this central fiber. So that's going from central to global. Global. Okay. And uh, yeah, so one word on this discrete towards continuous. So what is discrete here? Of course, it's just the set of places of my, uh, uh, of my number field, right? So just uh, so something, uh, something uh, countable. And now you have a Berkovich space over Z, which is uh, a continuous object, right? And, uh, so, and I want to use this continuity, like put all those discrete things into a continuous family. And like that, a concrete uh, outcome of this is that, uh, so if you have some X here in the analytification of, uh, of my pairs, I can associate to this a measure, like my, uh, my equilibrium measure, right? Uh, so which would be like mu A X. So this is a measure on some Berkovich space, uh, some pi one over some field that I denote by H of X, P1 of C or anything. And I claim that this map is continuous. Okay, so this one is continuous. Same with mu, mu B will be continuous. And actually, the map also, when you put all those measures together, you, uh, the, 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 the local energy is also continuous. So all of those are continuous map, maps. And this holds in a quite uh, general setting. Okay, so now we really have some continuous family of measures. Okay, and uh, <coughs> now the estimate. So the thing is that I claim that if you, we have some kind of continuous, uh, yeah, uh, continuous family of measures, so probably if you want to understand something, we, we may start with understanding what happened like at the binding of the book, like at the central fiber, as I call it. And uh, okay, so I was sure to be a, a bit over time, so I wrote things down there. Which is like this, okay? Uh, so j j this is just to tell you that uh, this is something very concrete that you can actually compute on the central fiber. So I, I didn't say this, but so like, like the, uh, the, the family of measure that we get from the elliptic curve is something very concrete. So on the, uh, first of all, on the Archimedean side, you have, so the, the elliptic curve, it, it's, a, it's a group, a compact group, actually, so you have a R measure on that. If you push forward, this measure to P1 of C, you get uh, the equilibrium measure associated to the lattice map. Okay, and uh, on the Archimedean side, so you see that's a P1 Berkovich, and you have those points A1, A2, A3, A4, the points BI on the other side, and the uh, equilibrium measure, are, so we have some uh, thing uh, like, like you, you see some segment, maybe a bit broken, but some segment in red, some segment in green, and uh, the equilibrium measure are exactly the Lebesgue measure on those segments. Some seem extremely concrete too, okay? And if you have, you have two of those measures given by those segments, you can actually compute, uh, so yeah, it took me quite a long time, but you have yeah, at last some nice expression in terms of all the lengths of the segment and the lengths of the intersection and so on and so forth, which look like this. So it's something like very, very concrete, right? I mean, you, you just write down what it is. Okay, and so you, you know what it looks like on the, that the, the, like the central fiber. So that's step two. I mean, at some point, of course, you need to do something. And it, it's here that goes most of the, of the job. And now that you do that, uh, you can do the, the, the third step. So you have, uh, you know the intersection on the central fiber. So uh, you, uh, like, so estim like this central estimate plus the uh, adelic nature of the topology uh, tell you a lot of things. Tell you that you are going to have uh, um, some, some estimate of this form uh, everywhere. So yeah, sorry, I should have told you that using this, you can prove that uh, the local energy over, so over the central fiber, you can uh, have a lower bound of the form, something like some function of uh, log absolute value of the AI, log absolute value of the BJ. Something very concrete, but that I don't want to write down. Okay, and now this plus the adelic topology tell you that you have something like that on the central fiber, maybe with different constant, a bit lower constant. 
And so uh, this implies some uh, kind of global uh, estimates. And those global estimates, be, because of the adelic nature of the topology, they're going to hold almost everywhere on Z. And that, uh, like I'm meaning at every uh, normalized uh, periodic value, except for finitely many of them. Meaning that you already know everything up to a finitely many exception, which, which you can deal with by hand. And so, uh, so you, you just have something for uh, such an estimate for almost uh, all places. And when you sum up, uh, you see that the, uh, yeah, so this was the, the, the local one yeah, over central thing. And so the global one, so this one is global, uh, you are going to, to see that uh, <coughs> you, you need to write down things explicitly, but you have like some max involved. And you end up with proving that this is some constant time the height of the, uh, your point in the projective space, P5 over there, plus some constant here, okay? And this is really like the, the, the crucial thing. You have your local estimate, you sum them up, and up to some correcting factor that you can put in the constant here, you find something like this. And when you have something like this, it's not too difficult to go from, uh, from this to the lower bound I said before, like some absolute lower bound, using a bit of... Uh, uh, like the product formula or something like that. I mean, if you have no lower bound, you could have something very small on the Archimedean side, but if it's very small on the Archimedean side, it's going to be very big on the non-Archimedean side and so on and so forth. Playing like that, you find some uh, this uh, absolute lower bound that I said before. And uh, yeah, with a bit more to work, uh, the, 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 this uh, global uh, uniformity of the intersection uh, that uh, is the, the, the conjecture of uh, Bogomolov Fuchinko I, I talked about at the, at the beginning. Yeah, so that's it. Sorry for rushing a bit uh, the end, but uh, okay, I, I hope you, you still understood the, the general picture. And the nice thing that you, okay, okay that, that, that this strategy is something that should be, uh, I think, like applicable in a lot of situations. And uh, <coughs> okay, hopefully uh, will uh, we'll, uh, we'll prove useful in the, in the future. Thank you for your attention. Questions? Yeah. <laughs> so is uh, this um, conjecture or proof uh, specific to Q bar or you can do on any global field? Yeah, okay, so you, using, uh, using this method I can only prove it over Q bar. But uh, it's not so difficult uh, to deduce it uh, from the case of Q bar. I mean, you, you could reduce uh, like the, the same conjecture for any field of uh, characteristic zero to the case of Q-bar. That, that's just as a standard specialization argument, nothing uh, so deep here. Uh, it holds. I studied it over Q-bar, but uh, it holds in a much more generality. Okay. Um, Jose? Sorry, maybe you have said this already, but can you comment how you go from the lower bound of the energy to the bound in the intersection, please? Yeah, I, yes. I can say it in a, in a few words. No, I, I, did not, I did not say it. Uh, yeah, I think there was already enough material, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, <coughs> it's a funny argument. Uh, let, me, uh, let me try to see if... If I can remember how this works, uh, so, so that's basically based on, on the, um, the triangle inequality. Again, so uh, you have this uh, lower bound for uh, L A and L B, so independent L A and L B. Okay, and now uh, <coughs> instead of using this, so this is something uh, where you use those uh, equilibrium measures, right? So, and, uh, yeah, maybe I want to put uh, a square uh, somewhere. Um, yeah. And, uh, no. Uh, <laughs> sorry. I want to, to write down the triangle inequality, of course. And uh, so I want to use this, okay, with some different measures, like uh, basically, so this would be maybe some, uh, yeah, let me write it down and I, 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 I comment afterwards. Uh, Okay, so that would be, this would be like a sum of uh, direct mass, sum of direct mass supported at, at some points in F, okay? And uh, the nice thing is that, 
Uh, you can check, it's also what's very nice in this uh, theory by Fab and Rivard Lutelier, that it, it's recovered many of the things we, we, we know. So this is uh, nothing else that the, uh, the, the height, how do you call it, like the, the cold Silverman height, like this dynamical height, associated to the lattice map of the, 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 the set of points F. In particular, if F is pre-periodic both for, uh, if F is pre-periodic for LA, this is, this is zero, okay? And now, if F is pre-periodic for LA and LB, this is zero and this is zero. Okay, of course, this doesn't work because zero is not bigger than some constant, so meaning I, I cheated a bit somewhere, and I cheated a bit uh, here, because this does all only for uh, measures that are regular enough, which is very good for these uh, lattice maps, the equilibrium to the lattice map, but not for uh, these uh, direct maps supported at some point. So, and that's in the paper, and that's really like the, the something, uh, uh, I mean, Charles told me that it was the only thing that was in this paper that was this argument, that was telling that how to pass from this, so this is a direct mass at some point, so you somehow approximate uh, this uh, like direct mass at a point by some, uh, oh, it depends, so in the complex setting, it would be basically some R measure uh, over some small uh, annulus uh, over small annulus, maybe small would be some epsilon, uh, around this point. And same in the non archimedean thing, you approximate the direct mass at some point by the direct mass on some uh, Gauss point very close to it, which is much more regular. And okay, with those new approximations, so let me, let me put like some uh, epsilon like that here, uh, this actually holds. So now you just need to compare, uh, to compare this uh, energy pairing with the approximated measure to uh, this, which is zero, and they have some explicit formula. Uh, so something like, uh, okay, if I try to, to, to write down some inequality, probably I'm going to, to mess up the sign, but still, uh, it would be something plus, I mean, it's a very explicit formula. Uh, so plus some constants and dividing by, divided by the cardinality of the set F that you have here, okay? So, right, I mean, so when you, you replace this uh, by, by those, those terms are zero because F are pre-periodic both for LA and LB, and you just end up with some constant divided by, some, by the number of, uh, of pre-periodic points, and which, uh, if I write down the inequality in the right way, probably it is, uh, gives you some, uh, some upper bound on the cardinality of such set F, okay? Okay, so perhaps one more question. Thanks. Um, I wonder if uh, if it is uh, possible this um, to, to extend this to um, to a property of Bogomolov type in that uh, about the intersections of uh, points of a small height in one in one curve and with the others, with the small height of the other. Once, I mean, since you have this dynamical height for each. Uh, you, you mean uh, you, 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 you don't want, uh, yeah, like you want something uh, stated in, like in a Bogomolov way, yeah. in, in, the same, uh, in, the same, uh, in the same setting? Yeah. Like the, the number of points with height smaller than blah, 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 is smaller than blah, yeah. Exactly, yeah. for the uh, corresponding height. <coughs> yeah, uh, yeah, it goes like this. I didn't say it, but uh, if you look at uh, my paper and in the paper by DeMarco Krigerier, that, that's the way it's done, actually. So we, we have this more general uh, statement uh, already, yeah. It's, it's a consequence of uh, exactly the same thing. You, you don't have to work uh, harder to, to get this, but yeah. And, uh, sure, thanks for, for the question. Well, so we thank the speaker again.